Welcome back to the channel. Before we get into the Q&A, I just want to thank Jason for becoming a new Patreon. Your support is really appreciated and it really helps me keep this channel going. So thank you so much. If any of you are interested in becoming a Patreon and supporting the channel, then all the information is down below. In today's video, we're going to be our... We? It's just me in here. Uh, I'm going to be answering your questions you asked two months ago. Again, I'm a bit slow on the Q&A answers, but it's better late than never. So. Without further ado, let's get straight on and answer your questions. Okay, so the first question is from Frank. Is, are you planning on batch producing anything for Etsy or are they all bespoke items? I do a bit of both. All my bespoke items on Etsy have sold out uh, and all the others I obviously continue to make because uh, I make multiple of them. Talking about that, I have been working very hard the last week making a few more beer barrel coasters. So yeah, I got about 200 of those and they'll be on the Etsy store very soon. The next question is, have you thought about selling uh, the inlay edge banding blocks? I have thought about that. The idea kind of got shot down pretty quickly because the amount of time it takes to make, I'm not sure if people would spend the £100 mark on an inlay block. If you don't know what Frank is talking about, uh, I make these inlay blocks, uh, it's a big block, we have all these pieces glued together and you can slice it up and inlay it into pitch frames or tabletops. So yeah, if I were to do that it probably will be on a commission basis because if I stocked it I'm not sure how many people would be interested in paying that much. The fourth question is when you bought your table saw did you look at the AT254SB first? I'm curious to see the difference, is it worth the price difference? In my opinion, yes it is worth the difference. I think it still is very expensive and it could go down in price, but it is the only table saw in the UK which allows dado stacks. So yeah, if you want that American style, then it probably is worth the difference. However, if you're interested in the SB table saw, then I do recommend it. I think uh, it'll be a great saw, and I believe there are lots of extras you can get with it, like a sliding table, and stuff like that. And Frank's final question is, any news on TV work here? I seem to remember you mentioning it in your interviews. Well, you can tell this Q&A is a little bit late because yes, I am gonna be on a new woodworking TV show. If you didn't check out my last video, that is a trailer for the new show. It's a bit like The Great British Bake Off, um, which if you don't know what that is, uh, maybe you know Forged in Fire. It's like a, it's a competition format, but for woodworkers. It should be a really entertaining show. And if you want to see the trailer, I'll link it down below. Also, I forgot to mention it's coming out on the 15th of October. I will be uploading a video very soon with more information about the TV show, so look out for that. Okay, and the next question is from Brian. I'd like to hear your story on how you got into woodwork. All right, so I've always been creative. Uh, when I was very younger, I was into art, doing a lot of sort of paper sculptures when I was a lot younger, kind of lots of crafty things. When I joined secondary school, which is high school in America, I was introduced to woodwork on a design technology course and I had a very inspirational teacher there called Mr Norman. A lot of you have heard me speak about him before. Uh, without him I wouldn't be doing this because he really got me into it. So that was at the age of 11 when I started woodworking and when I was at school I started this workshop in the garage building up the tools. If you look at my very early videos you can see how much this workshop has evolved. So yeah just kept on making, kept on watching YouTube videos, learning new skills. Mr Norman opened the workshop in free time and break time so I could go in there. And then I went to university for a furniture design and make course and now I was learning new things and keep on practicing with my own projects, and now I'm a full-time woodworker. Next question is from Alex. Uh, do you have a girlfriend? Thank you, Alex. Alex is actually my benchmate at uni, and he knows I don't have a girlfriend, so he just wanted to put that comment in, so thank you very much. I am single, yeah, but I get more time in the workshop, so that's a win. Okay, so the next question is from Simon, and he's saying he's currently building a tabletop Moxon and Vice, and he's struggling to find the parts. Do I have any suggestions? There are a few places online where you can buy Moxon and Vice parts, like Workshop Heaven. Um, I even found one on AliExpress. Not sure how good that would be, but that seems pretty cheap. So yeah, if you got the money for the Workshop Heaven one, that would be very good quality. I have a Mox and Vice, but I rarely use it. I find most of my work fits into the standard uh, bench vice on my workbench. But if you need to clamp something that is tall and long, you could just use some F-clamps and clamp it to uh, the width of your workbench. Next question is, how do you sharpen your tools? Chisels, handles, lathe tools? Uh, yeah, so I'll show you that now. Okay, so to sharpen all my hand tools, I do it freehand, and I use the Rob Cosman method, which is using a 1,000 grit Trend Diamond Stone, and then a 16,000 grit Shapton Stone. Uh, I think it's called a, a glass or ceramic stone. Uh, this combo is very quick and very good. And if you want to see exactly how to do it, then I recommend watching Rob Cosman's sharpening video, because it is his method, so I don't think I should show it in my video. 
but I highly recommend it, so go over to his channel. I actually put a link down below because that's easier if you want to know. To sharpen saw blades, then I use a V-shaped file and I clamp the saw on a vise, and then I just go back and forth on each tooth and sharpen it that way. And to sharpen saw blades, I've got this trend sharpening plate. I'm not sure what you call it. It's sort of a business card sized, and it's got that diamond uh, grip material on both sides. So one side is 300 grit and the other side is 600, I think. And that is perfect for router bits, saw blades, and I just put some sharpening solution on and I just rub it on each tooth and then you've got a sharp saw blade. And these are really cheap, these are about £10, so uh, highly recommend getting these one of these trend sharpening plates, I think they're called. Okay, the next question is from Bruce. How do you stay motivated in the shop and how do you come up with new ideas? Uh, that's a very good question. I stay motivated by pushing myself. If I'm doing a project that is difficult or, or something that I haven't done before, then uh, I get really motivated and excited about what I'm doing. If I'm doing something pretty simple and uh, repetitive, then it can get pretty boring. If you're making your own design and you're pushing yourself, it's hard not to be motivated and excited about what you're doing. And how do I get my ideas? I get inspiration from other makers, finding styles and designs I like and thinking of a different way to do it or a twist in the design. So if you search around for pieces of furniture you like, uh, maybe research that maker and uh, look at their other work, then that might give you some inspiration for that type of style and then you can develop your own designs from that. Don't copy, but get inspired. So for example, uh, the Norman chair I made, that was inspired by a few different things. One of them being uh, Charles and Ray Eames, LCW chair. Yes, uh, the Charles and Ray Eames LCW chair has a lot of bent lamination. So that inspired me to uh, do a chair that was all bent lamination and uh, I'm pretty happy with my design. As you can see, it looks nothing like their chair but their process inspired me. So hopefully that was helpful. Okay, the next question is from Mr. Jones. I'm not gonna try and pronounce his name because I looked it up and it is pretty difficult. And then he asks, any thoughts about collaborating with any other content creators? For example, Matt Esley. Now I do actually have some collaborations lined up in the future, but we haven't got round to doing that. Um, because I've been very busy. But yes, I do want to do some collaborations. The people I've spoken to know who they are. And with Matt Ashley, we have spoken in the past about doing it. So yeah, hopefully we'll work something out. Next question. And that question is from Crosscut Creations. What is your dream or bucket list project that you'd like to take on one day? Good question. I'm not really sure, I haven't really thought about it, but I do want to make a big dining room table. Also a chest of drawers or some sort of cabinet with a lot of drawers. And a similar question from Richard is how do you feel about making cabinets? Again, yeah, I'd love to make it. Space is a bit of an issue. But yeah, I think I'll be doing one in the future. Like a nice Krenov cabinet style, I really want to make one of them. So you might be seeing that on the channel very soon. The next question is from Lewis and he says, what is your next wanted tool? That is probably, if we're talking about a big purchase, it's probably a bigger bandsaw because I want to do some wider resawing cuts and make my own veneers. That bandsaw is a little bit slow with that as well. The next question is from Creative Constructions. Should I buy cheap tools now and upgrade or wait and buy right, buy once? Um, it's a good question. I always say that if you buy cheap, you buy twice. So I normally save up my money and buy a better quality one. In my opinion, when you're new to woodworking, it's very difficult to know what you can get away with and what tolerances tools need to be at, if that makes sense. It's when you have enough experience, you know what you can cheap out on and what you need uh, to spend more money on, if that makes sense. Overall, I'd always say buy the best you can. And if the best version is a little bit more money that you don't have, then I would save up. But in terms of mistakes, um, people, when they begin make, um, I kept these clamps uh, just to show in a video at the right time. When I first got into woodwork, um, I bought these very cheap, you know, one-handed clamps. And these are awful, and <laughs> I don't mind saying that. I used them a couple of times when I started, and I haven't used them since. I, they stay on top of that shelf, just because I wanted to show it in a video. The clamping force is not strong at all. Uh, the quick release button is broken. You definitely want to save up and get some Irwin ones, or Bessie, or Axminster. I got Irwin, because I think they're really good. But yeah, some things you shouldn't cheap out on, but when you have experience, you'll know the type of stuff you can get away with. For example, strap clamps, this is a silver line product, um, and these are really cheap. I think it was like two, four, five pounds maybe, and I use these all the time, and I haven't needed to spend more money and get a better quality one. If you're interested in me making a video on what cheap tools I recommend, 
uh, to buy, then just comment down below and I'll do that video for you. Next question is from Jim. He said he noticed that my hand tools are mainly Lee Nielsen, uh, but as a hobbyist, he can't justify the price. So do I have any recommendations on reasonably priced hand tools? Uh, yes, I do. There are a few. Wood River, uh, Quang Sheng, and Axminster Rider are all sort of the mid-range uh, tools that still, if you sharpen the blade right and you set it up right, will cut just as nicely as the more expensive ones. I wouldn't recommend getting very cheap. If you go to a big box store and you see a plane in a vacuum packed sort of uh, sleeve and it has plastic handles and it's brightly coloured, then don't buy it and if it's cheap, don't buy it. I highly recommend getting mid-range and above. Uh, you do get what you pay for. And the next question is from Greg, and he says, will I be going back to woodworking school? And the answer is no. I'm gonna be a full-time woodworker from now on. I'm not saying no to education. There are some advanced woodworking courses you can go on, and also specialist courses on specific processes that sound really interesting. So if you wanna get better at steam bending, then you can go on a steam bending course with like a master craftsman. So. Uh, yeah, I may be doing some of them in the future. Next question is from Bertie's workshop. Bertie went to the same school as me and he's also been taught by Mr. Norman. So make sure you say hi to Mr. Norman from me, Bertie. And he says, when I make a mistake, how do you cope with it? And what was my uni course like? So to answer the first question, uh, it's a very difficult question because it depends what the mistake is. Most of the mistakes, about 99% of the mistakes that are made in my workshop and I assume in a lot of people's workshops can be fixed. It might make the making time of the project a bit longer to get over that mistake but most of the time it can be fixed, the hole can be plugged, the chip out you know wood can be added on and you can plane it flush again. Um, so yeah it doesn't really affect me anymore. I do actually remember sort of the turning point where uh, I had a mistake once and I think it was a big bit of chip out or something but I was really calm and I thought, yeah, I know what to do, I know how to fix it. And I think that was the point when I realised not to get, you know, worried or angry with, the, with my work because there's always a way around it. And I remember being very calm, fixing a mistake and carrying on. So uh, when you're very early on, it feels like an absolute disaster when something wrong happens, but just stop, stop what you're doing, you know, maybe have a drink and think about what you're gonna do and how you fix it. His next question is, what is my uni course like? If you like woodwork, then you're gonna like a woodworking course, obviously. In year one, there was set projects and one personal design made project. The set projects were some side tables and a dovetail box. Um, there might have been another one, but I forgot. And my personal design make was the hallway table. And in year two, um, we had some more set projects. We had the spline box, uh, we had the side tables and we're gonna have two design made projects but because of coronavirus one has got cancelled but I managed to do one which was the Norman chair which was the bent lamination chair so yeah there's a mixture between set projects and personal projects there are quite a few woodworking courses out there you've got to do the research to find which one is right for you the ones I recommend are Walton Ackland, Mark Fish, the Building Crafts College, Rycote Wood and I think it's called the Chippendale School of Fine Furniture um, they're the big ones, so check them out. All right, so we're near the end. The final question is from Corbin. He says, where do you get your wood from? And have you ever thought about making a wooden hand plane? To answer the wooden hand plane, I'm not very keen on making a wooden hand plane because I have a number of planes that work perfectly fine and I'm not crazy excited about making a wooden hand plane. I know that whatever I make won't be as good as uh, the Lee Nielsen ones because they've been doing it for so many years. It's all metal and they're perfectly made, so anything I make, uh, I, I wouldn't use. So I'm not keen on making a wooden hand plane. Um, and the first question is, where do I get my wood from? Um, a few places. The first one is Chilton Timber. They're great for shoot materials and they also have a good solid wood section. The second one is Surrey Timbers. They just do solid wood and they've got a lot of boards and they've also got an exotic wood section upstairs. And the final one is Timberline. They basically just do exotic wood, so if you want a very uh, specific species or a rare wood, then they've got it. So for my inlays, I'll go there. But yeah, Timberline, Surrey Timbers, Chilton Timber. Beautiful places. All right, and that is the video done. I'm sorry if I didn't get round to answering your questions. 
The video is getting pretty long and I think I picked the most interesting ones. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out the new TV show I'm on, the trailer will be in the description down below. Thank you for sticking to the end of the video and I'll see you in a few days for the next one.